Hi, I'm looking for a rental home. Do you have any tips on how to find a good one? Sure. First, you need to decide on your budget and preferred location. Then, start searching for listings online or in local newspapers. What should I look for in a good rental home? You should look for a place that is affordable and suits your needs. Check for amenities like parking, laundry facilities, and weather utilities are included. What are some things I should be aware of before signing a rental agreement? Make sure you understand the terms of the agreement, such as the length of the lease, the amount of the security deposit, and the penalties for breaking the lease early. Also, inspect the property for any damage and take photos before moving in. How can I negotiate the rental price? You can ask the landlord if they are willing to negotiate on the price, but be prepared to make concessions, such as signing a longer lease or paying a higher security deposit. What about pets? Can I bring my dog to a rental home? Some landlords allow pets, but others don't. Be sure to ask about their policy on pets before signing a lease. You may also be required to pay a pet deposit or monthly pet fee. Thanks for the advice. How long does it usually take to find a rental home? It depends on the location and availability of rental properties. It could take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to find the right place. Okay, I'll start looking now. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Good luck with your search. Hi, I'm interested in renting a home. What are the necessary rental procedures? First, you need to fill out an application and provide proof of income and references. Then, if you're approved, you'll need to sign a rental agreement and pay a security deposit. What's a security deposit? It's a payment you make to the landlord at the beginning of your tenancy to cover any damages you might cause to the property during your stay. If there are no damages, the landlord will return the deposit to you at the end of your lease. How much is the security deposit? It varies depending on the landlord and the property, but it's usually one month's rent. What happens after I sign the rental agreement? You'll need to pay the first month's rent before you move in. Then, you'll be responsible for paying rent on a monthly basis for the duration of your lease. How do I make rent payments? You can usually pay rent by check, money order, or online payment. Be sure to check with your landlord to see what methods of payment they accept. What are my responsibilities as a tenant? You're responsible for keeping the property clean and in good condition and for reporting any maintenance issues to the landlord. You're also responsible for following the terms of the rental agreement, such as not having pets if they're not allowed. What if something breaks in the house? Who's responsible for fixing it? It depends on the terms of the rental agreement. Usually, the landlord is responsible for major repairs, such as plumbing or electrical issues. However, you may be responsible for minor repairs, such as replacing light bulbs or unclogging drains. What if I need to move out before the end of my lease? You'll need to check the rental agreement to see if there are penalties for breaking the lease early. You may be required to pay a fee or forfeit your security deposit. It's best to talk to your landlord and try to come to an agreement. Okay, thanks for explaining everything to me. I feel more confident about renting a home now. You're welcome. Don't hesitate to ask your landlord or property manager if you have any questions about the rental procedures. Hi, I'm about to sign a lease agreement, but I want to make sure I understand the rights and obligations of both the landlord and the tenant. Can you explain them to me? Sure. Landlords are required to maintain the property in a habitable condition and make any necessary repairs. Tenants, on the other hand, are responsible for keeping the property clean and in good condition. What if something breaks in the house? If something breaks due to normal wear and tear, it's the landlord's responsibility to fix it. 
However, if something breaks because of the tenant's negligence or misuse, the tenant may be responsible for the cost of repairs. And what about returning furniture in the house? Do I have to keep everything in the same condition as when I moved in? Yes, you're responsible for returning the property in the same condition as when you moved in, except for normal wear and tear. Any damages beyond normal wear and tear may result in deductions from your security deposit. What are some examples of contract violations that could result in penalties? Some common contract violations include not paying rent on time, having unauthorized pets or guests, and causing damage to the property. The penalties for these violations may include late fees, eviction, or forfeiture of the security deposit. What if my landlord doesn't fulfill their obligations, such as making necessary repairs? If your landlord doesn't fulfill their obligations, you may be able to withhold rent or repair the issue yourself and deduct the cost from your rent. However, it's important to follow proper legal procedures and document everything. And what if my landlord wants to enter the property without my permission? Your landlord must give you reasonable notice before entering the property, except in case of an emergency. They also can't enter the property without your consent except under specific circumstances, such as to make necessary repairs. Okay, thanks for explaining everything to me. It's important to understand the rights and obligations of both parties to ensure a smooth and fair rental experience. Absolutely! If you have any other questions or concerns, don't hesitate to ask your landlord or seek legal advice. I'm looking to rent a place, but I'm not sure what type of rental home I should go for. What are my options? Well, there are several types of rental homes available, depending on your preferences and budget. The most common types are apartments, private homes, and dorm rooms. Okay, can you explain each one to me? Sure. Apartments are usually units in a larger building that are rented out to tenants. They can range in size from studios to multi-bedroom units and often have amenities like pools, gyms, and laundry facilities. What about private homes? Private homes are houses that are rented out to tenants. They can be owned by individual landlords or property management companies and can range in size and style from small cottages to large mansions. And what are dorm rooms? Dorm rooms are rooms in a larger building, typically on a college or university campus, that are rented out to students. They often have shared living spaces, like kitchens and bathrooms, and may be furnished. Which one do you think is the best option for me? It really depends on your needs and preferences. If you're looking for more amenities and a sense of community, an apartment complex or dorm room may be a good fit. If you prefer more privacy and space, a private home may be a better option. Okay, thanks for explaining everything. What about the costs of each type of rental home? Again, it depends on the specific property and location. Generally, apartments and dorm rooms tend to be more affordable, while private homes may be more expensive. However, there are always exceptions to these generalizations. Got it. And what about the lease terms for each type of rental home? Lease terms can vary for each type of rental home, but typically range from 6 to 12 months for apartments and private homes. Dorm rooms often follow the academic calendar and are rented on a semester or yearly basis. Thanks for the information. It's good to know my options and what to expect when renting different types of homes. Absolutely! Let me know if you have any other questions or concerns. I'm thinking about renting a home, but I'm worried about the legal issues involved. What do I need to know? Well, there are several legal issues to consider when renting a home. One of the most important is personal income tax. What do you mean? When you rent a home, you'll be responsible for paying taxes on the rental income you receive. This is considered personal income and is subject to taxation. 
How much do I need to pay? The amount you'll need to pay depends on your rental income and your tax bracket. It's important to consult with a tax professional to determine your specific tax liability. Okay, what else do I need to know? Another important legal issue to consider is property use rights. When you rent a home, you'll be given certain rights to use the property, but there may be restrictions on how you can use it. Can you give me an example? Sure. Some landlords may have restrictions on how many people can live in the home or may prohibit certain activities, like smoking or keeping pets. It's important to read your lease agreement carefully to understand what restrictions may apply to you. What if I violate these restrictions? If you violate the restrictions outlined in your lease agreement, your landlord may have the right to terminate your lease or take legal action against you. It's important to abide by the terms of your lease to avoid any legal issues. That makes sense. Are there any other legal issues I need to be aware of? One final issue to consider is liability for property damage. When you rent a home, you'll be responsible for any damage you or your guests cause to the property. It's important to document the condition of the property when you move in and to report any damage or issues to your landlord in a timely manner. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks for the information. No problem. It's important to be aware of these legal issues when renting a home to avoid any potential problems down the road. I'm having a hard time finding an affordable place to rent. Are there any rental assistance programs available? Yes, there are several rental assistance programs available through the government and social organizations. Can you tell me more about them? Sure. One common program is Section 8, which is a federal program that provides rental assistance to low-income families and individuals. How does it work? Basically, eligible families and individuals receive a voucher that they can use to help pay their rent. The amount of the voucher is based on the family's income and the local rental market. That sounds like it could be helpful. Are there any other programs available? Yes, there are also state and local programs that provide rental assistance, as well as nonprofit organizations that may be able to help. How do I find out if I'm eligible for these programs? The eligibility requirements vary depending on the program, but generally you'll need to meet certain income and residency requirements. You can contact your local housing authority or nonprofit organizations to find out more. That's good to know. What about the application process? The application process can vary depending on the program, but typically you'll need to provide proof of income, residency, and other relevant information. You may also need to attend an interview and provide references. Okay, that makes sense. Are there any other important things I should know? It's important to remember that these programs can have waiting lists, so it's a good idea to apply as early as possible. Also, some landlords may not accept rental assistance vouchers, so it's important to check with your potential landlord before applying for a program. Thank you for all the information. It's good to know that there are programs available to help people in difficult circumstances. Absolutely. Rental assistance programs can be a great resource for those who need help finding affordable housing. I'm thinking about renting a place, but I'm not sure how to make it as cost-effective and comfortable as possible. Any tips? Definitely. One way to save money on rent is to look for places outside of the city center where rents tend to be higher. That makes sense. What about other expenses, like utilities? Well, some landlords include utilities in the rent, but if not, you can look for ways to reduce your utility bills. For example, you can switch to energy-efficient light bulbs and appliances and turn off lights and electronics when you're not using them. Good point. What about increasing the convenience and comfort of the place? 
There are several things you can do to make your rental more comfortable. For example, you can add some personal touches like artwork or throw pillows to make the space feel more like home. You can also invest in comfortable furniture and bedding. That sounds nice, but won't it be expensive? It doesn't have to be. You can find affordable furniture and bedding at secondhand stores or online marketplaces. And adding personal touches doesn't have to cost much at all. Okay, that's good to know. What else can I do to make my rental experience better? One thing you can do is to communicate with your landlord. If there are any issues with the property or appliances, let them know as soon as possible so they can be fixed. And if you're interested in making any upgrades or changes to the property, ask your landlord if they're willing to work with you. That's a good idea. What about security? You can also take steps to improve the security of your rental. For example, you can install a security system or deadbolts on the doors and make sure all windows have locks. And always make sure to keep your doors and windows locked when you're not home. Those are all great tips. Thanks for the advice. No problem. Remember, renting can be a great option for many people, and there are ways to make the experience more cost-effective and comfortable. Oh.